Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson, and you are watching The Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium. So today I'm going to take you on a journey. Well, I'm going to show you a couple fish, 10 fish that I think do not go well with dwarf shrimp. So that's Neocaridina, Caridina, uh, crystals, ties, tiger shrimps, uh, you know, Taiwan bees, that kind of thing. Uh, they may go well with the adults, but as far as if you want to keep a colony, these are some of the fish that oftentimes people will put in their nano tanks and they will just not understand why their tanks are not growing, why, uh, you know, a nano tank can be a big tank too, but they won't get why these small fish uh, are in the tank and eating all the babies. It just seems like they're too small a fish and they wouldn't be doing that much damage. So we're gonna go down the list and I'm gonna read off and show you guys my top 10 uh, most dangerous fish that you wouldn't assume are dangerous to your baby shrimps, but that are, and then some good suggestions for uh, a species that you could use other than those ones that are terrorizing your shrimp while you're sleeping. So if you like it, give me a, a thumbs up, please, a like. If you want to subscribe, see more content like this, I would also totally enjoy that. We have a big thousand dollar giveaway going on currently through July. And uh, other than that, just uh, comment down below whether you think this list is a good one or if I missed the ball somewhere or if you have experiences with other fish uh, that I missed in either way. You know, everyone's experiences are going to be different depending on the size of the tank and the age of the fish and how many fish there are and how healthy your uh, shrimp colony is. But in my experience in keeping thousands of fish, this is just kind of what I have found and noticed. So here we go. Let's start looking at some fish. <laughs> All right, guys. So at number 10, we have the Ember Tetra. And you guys have probably seen these fish. They're, uh, they're very common. They're beautiful fish, and I love them. Uh, but they tend, you see these little orange tetras down in there? They tend to get hungry and eat baby shrimp. Now, a lot of tetras will tend to do this, not just the ember tetras. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. And if it has a mouth big enough for baby shrimp, there's a good chance that that fish could eat your baby shrimp. But there are also a lot of fish that are not going to at such a ferocious rate. But these uh, ember tetras, boy, I've had some trouble with them eating my cherry shrimp. Apparently this angelfish wants to be a star. So instead of the ember tetra, I would recommend if we walk over to this tank that you get maybe a phoenix rasbora or a chili rasbora. They're smaller and they're just not going to end up chowing down on so much of your uh, of <laughs> the life in your tank and uh, of the baby shrimp. Now I have some in here but I don't know if they're going to make an appearance. We are going to see uh, some of my other favorite shrimp and fish in here so let's continue down the list and if they decide to make an appearance uh, we can point those out. So next up on the list, number nine is going to be the scarlet baddis. And the scarlet baddis is a nano predator. It lives in India in little puddles and it eats what it can when it can. And it is ferocious. It may be beautiful, but it is ferocious. And a good alternative instead of that would be a ruby tetra. It's still got the nice red coloring. In fact, probably better red coloring. And they stick together and they kind of hang out in a tight cluster, a group, uh, and they move in this kind of robotic motion that's kind of cool to watch. All right, the next thing that you don't want to keep with your shrimp is actually an Amano shrimp. So these Amano bigger shrimp oftentimes can be really mean to your uh, little teeny shrimp, and they will steal the food out of their mouth they will grab a chunk of food and they will run away with it uh with no pity no mercy uh as well as kind of smack around the babies and if they can uh it, it kind of looks like they chew on them sometimes so uh if you have a mono shrimp just be careful uh if they're in your cherry shrimp or you know your neocaridina shrimp colony as you can see here i've got a healthy enough colony that it's working out and 
Also, as I said before, there are exceptions to every uh, rule and, you know, the amount of vegetation and hiding spots, that's key. You can check a lot of info out about how you can put your shrimp in tanks with critters that you would never think would survive, like that angelfish over there. Yes, there are shrimp in that tank with him. Okay, so if we move on, uh, at number seven, we've got guppies. So, you know, you saw guppies in the other tank, and these are actually what I would suggest as an alternative. These are endlers, and these are actually big endlers at that. So I think instead of guppies, which grow larger, get just male endlers. A lot of them are much smaller. They still may hunt some of your baby shrimp. Don't get me wrong, if they're out in the open, uh, they could be food, just like uh, just like they are to most any fish. Right here, there is a uh, phoenix rasbora swimming around here. He's not lit up bright red right now, but uh, that is your uh, phoenix rasbora that I was mentioning earlier. And these are some fongsy rasboras, which are also a great choice uh instead of one of those ember tetras as mentioned earlier all right so we're gonna hop back over to the other tank for a moment dun, 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 dun. all right we have the happy angelfish here to greet us so this one you know might be kind of a no-brainer to some people in the hobby who have been here a long time but Actually, you know, a lot of people do it and ask about it, and that is if you have any sort of things. We talked about the ember, uh, the ember tetra here, um, and we've talked. Uh, what we haven't talked about are some of those medium-sized tetras. So, like the serpe, uh, the serpe tetra, the the kitty tetra, the lemon tetra, the bleeding heart tetra. Some of the ones that don't get huge, but they've got that nice diamond-shaped body, and uh, they're beautiful fish, but they love to eat any little critter they can find. I mean, they love eating brine shrimp and that sort of thing, and, you know, here are some guppies over here with the blue on them, whereas my endlers are these little uh, tiger and leopard print ones, so they stay quite a bit smaller than especially the female uh the female variety, which I think really helps out with a shrimp tank. They're just not quite as voracious as some of the big females, and they don't have uh, that kind of drive for reproduction that maybe causes them to binge on the live food. So I'm going to recommend instead of those serpe or silver tip tetras, some of the bigger tetras, um, you could either get these reed tetras, which are awesome, they school really well together, and they're a nice uh, bluish silver. They look great in an aquascape. They've got a little black dot on their tail, a little diamond. And they kind of have other uh, metallic, they've got a rainbow of hues that kind of shine off of them. So they look great. And I just realized, man, that reflection looks bad from that angle with the tank, the water stain on it. So I apologize. But... These are reed tetras here, and they also school with Corydora hebrosis, which I think is rad. So I would say that coming in at number six, that would be my suggestion. All right, let's hop downstairs and see what other fish are around. And as I said, we're going to look at who's out and around and not necessarily who uh, is in the list in order, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, I have Celestial Pearl Daniels, I have uh, Som Fongsi Rasboras, I, I have many species of shrimp, and I've been keeping them for quite some time, so I've tried a lot of different combinations. I'm always moving combos in my tank, and as we walk downstairs, let me cover it up so no one gets seasick, but as we head downstairs, it should be a no-brainer that if you have a goldfish or a betta, I don't consider those nano fish, uh, but if you have a goldfish or a betta, that is not a good choice to go with your shrimp. I get these questions asked frequently, and I sometimes just shake my head. So the ruby 
tetra that I mentioned earlier, they're right here. These are the ruby red tetras. Beautiful color. Um, sometimes they get really red, especially the males when they're excited or just ate. And uh, they're a great choice. They still will munch on baby shrimp occasionally, but much, much less of it than uh, you see with some of the other, you know, larger ones or a scarlet baddis which those things will eat as fast as they can whatever fits in their mouth now this tank surprisingly it has shrimp out in the open you can see i also have convict cichlids and um, minnows and big giant female guppies as well as uh, some danios that grow up to three inches so uh, I'm not saying this is a hard and fast rule. They, this colony of shrimp actually still maintains itself. Uh, it doesn't really grow. But you can check out, like I said, look at videos on how to build a, a cave or how to stock and uh, plant plants that are going to keep your, your shrimp alive in the melee that is a crowded tank. Sometimes you can keep your shrimp alive by having a whole bunch of the same species just bugging one another rather than your shrimp. So same with down here, we've got lots of different uh, species in here. We have everything from plecos and corridoras uh, to danios and uh, to endlers. You can see the female endlers still get large. So as I said, stick with the male endlers and you will have a much smaller fish there's some specific lines like these japanese blues this is a full-grown male right here and he's not even an inch long so you can really kind of pick out some very small ones uh if you if you want to switch it up all right <clears throat> so let's get down to number five and that's going to be the bumblebee goby all right bumblebee goby's living in here somewhere and the coolie loaches, which I suggest instead of the bumblebee goby, are also uh, living in here, but they love to hide. And so I'm just going to say that if you've got a goby, there's a good chance that your goby is going to hunt down and eat every single baby shrimp it can find. Now, this shrimp tank looks dirty because it is, because they love their algae. And there's little baby shrimp all over this tank, uh, just hanging out, doing their shrimpy shrimp thing, and adult shrimp as well. But uh, I have tried it out by breeding various fish, like you can see how small the babies are, by breeding various fish, and I'm only putting two of the fish in, in a shrimp tank that's a 20 gallon at a time, I've literally lost every baby in a 24 hour period in the past by doing that with all of, well not all of, but a lot of the fish on this list that I've read off. All right, so the next one, number four, is going to be the peacock gudgeon. I had a peacock gudgeon and it literally jumped from a tank down the rack to another tank and it, it was spawning, and so the female jumped, and then the male jumped, is what I assume. Because in the morning, when I came down to my uh, beautiful blue dream shrimp tank, almost every single one was dead, including most of the adults who had never seen fish before, had very little shelter to hide under. I was keeping them just in Brightwell soil, basically, aqua soil, and they just had nowhere to go. There was no chance, and uh, I have some videos on the shrimp slaughter of 2017, I believe. All right, so number three on the list is going to be your Cardinal Tetra, or your neon blue tetra. Now, you might think those are small fish, that they're going to be fine, that uh, they school together, and I agree. If they're schooling together and you have like a 40 gallon or a bigger tank, you can probably get away with some of that, and you can probably still have your shrimp just kind of hiding out in the margins. We'll see if we can see some shrimp in these bigger layouts here, as I was saying. Um, it really depends on how you stock your tanks and how things are set up, because I've been able, luckily, to keep right here, you can see some young, these are new baby Malawa shrimp, um, and there's an adult right there, uh, with, you know, adult garamis and danios and all sorts of things in here, even a betta, believe it or not, even though I just said don't do that, and I said don't put them with lemon tetras or that sort of thing, 
It's possible, but they will eat a whole lot of babies unless you have a mountain for them to hide in. So, I would recommend instead of the Peacock Gudgeon, I would say get a marbled autosynclus. They're beautiful, a little hard to come by sometimes. Places like AquaticArts.com or maybe um, the Wet Spot, something like that probably is where you would have to find those if they're not at your local fish store. All right. Here we go. We've got an erythromicron swimming by. He's got the stripes, also known as the emerald dwarf rasbora right here. It's actually a Danio, though. And I just want to film him while he's out, show you how beautiful he is, because uh, we have the next one, number two, which is the sparkling gourami. And I would say that that's another one that looks so teeny. Like, what could the problem be? They're just these itty-bitty little fish that are like fingernail size. Well, they're that small, but they eat anything that fits in their mouth. And they're used to eating copepods and teeny stuff. And therefore, <laughs> they are going to devour your baby shrimp the day that they hatch. If not sooner. I've seen them actually... Uh, trying to get the eggs off of mama shrimp. It's it's brutal, but, you know, that's nature. So I would say instead of them, either get the Celestial Pearl Daniels that we talked about upstairs, those beautiful sparkly ones if you want that sparkliness, or if you just want something interesting around the same size that's a little more of a shy fish, uh, it will hang out in groups, um, and it will come out once in a while, but your Erythromicron will be a much less vicious uh, little nano fish, as will your Celestio Pearl Daniel. All right, the last one on the list, the number one worst, worst nano fish that you could ever try and put with your shrimp, right here, this guy, this guy. Yeah, you know what you did. So he is the worst that you could put with shrimp. This is a male, the females have more uh, dots and uh, kind of flecks and sparkles on them, but less intense color, and they're usually a little more rounded in the belly. But pea puffers, don't do as I do, uh, do as I say, because this is a very bizarre setup that I have going, and it's been balanced by adding one species slowly, one after the other, and making sure they're each taken care of in their own water space. But what I'd like to say about them is that pea puffers will eat all your snails, all your worms, all anything that fits in its mouth, anything that its beak can crush, and uh, you're just going to have a bad day if you have baby shrimp. They're going to eat them. In fact, they'll even eat adult shrimp, but uh, neocaridina shrimp don't seem to do so well with the pea puffers, even as adults. However, these Malawa shrimps or um, Gold Nebula shrimps, AquaticArts.com uh, has those. Uh, they seem to be quick enough on their toes that I've had uh, good results allowing them to have a colony together. Uh, you know, I think the, the best replacement for a pea puffer would be, again, one of those erythromicrons because they still have kind of that rounded uh, football-shaped body. They're still kind of interesting, and they move around kind of funky. They're a little shy, but they also come out and kind of check you out, and they're just a great option. One more that we might have missed uh, is the the Axelrod eye um, Rasbora, the neon blue or neon green Axelrod eye Rasbora. These guys are kind of like a chili Rasbora, a little bit bigger though. And they're a great alternative. They eat just, they, they're just a smaller fish that has a little bit less of a, a bitey instinct <laughs> like the, uh, the neon blue or green tetras. Now, don't get me wrong, I use neon tetras with shrimp frequently, but uh, they can get nippy. And neon tetras actually get, you know, an inch and a half, maybe even two. Uh, when they're full size, if if they're living a long, healthy life, getting the nutrients they need. So, I don't know what you think of my list, but there it is. The top 10 nano fish you should not keep with shrimp. I hope you learned a little something or got some ideas, maybe, of what to switch up. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be a million comments of, Hey, I've got blank. What should I put with it in my tank? And uh, I hope you guys help each other out there 
and just give give us a good feedback on what your experience has been keeping various fish together between all of our uh noggins i'm sure we can figure it out all right guys i'll see you in the comments take care of the critters in your care <laughs> and of course take care of yourself and the people around you we need it they need it and i will talk to you guys later thank you so much Bye-bye.